Do you want to have a beautiful, eco-friendly house like this while enjoying significant monetary savings? What do you need to do for that? Build it with your own two hands, of course! Because the cost of building a house is at least a 30% add-on to the cost of materials. And in this video, we will show you in detail how to build a finish log home yourself. Let's assume that the foundation is already there. Let's go! First, we need to lay some bituminous waterproof material on the concrete to protect the timber. On top of that, you can lay thin wooden planks, about 30 to 40 millimeters, or 1 and a quarter inch to 1 and a half inch thick. In the corners where the joints are, we must lay some mineral wool for insulation. By the way, it doesn't necessarily have to be a tape foundation. For a wooden house up to two stories high, you can also use a column foundation. But if you do the latter, the planks need to be thicker, 80 to 100 millimeters or 3 to 4 inches. Join the planks with metal nail plates. This method is both quick and reliable. For thicker planks, you should make L-shaped grooves to make the joints more steady. Insulation is a must. Instead of nail plates, you may use ordinary perforated metal plates and screws. It's also imperative that you attach the planks to the foundation. To do that, drill incisions in the concrete about 15 millimeters in diameter, 40 to 50 millimeters deep every meter or so. Hammer M16 bolts into the holes. Before you start, use a countersink to sink the bolt heads into the wood planks. Finally, using a spanner, tighten the bolts. Next, lay the insulation along the timber and attach it using a staple gun. If the insulation strips are not as wide as the planks, lay a few layers of rock wool so that they overlap. Next, we lay our first row of logs. The finished logs are ready for construction, which means it already has all of the necessary grooves. At this point, it's essentially like assembling a large Lego set. After each row of logs, you need to add a layer of insulation and secure it with the staple gun. The grooves in the logs are made using specialist equipment, which means they are precise down to the millimeter, so there shouldn't be any inconsistencies. One finished log of 180 millimeters, just over 7 inches in diameter, and 6 meters long, or 19.7 feet, weighs 80 kilograms, or 176 pounds. That's why two healthy men can easily do this job. There are thicker logs, 200, 220, and 240 millimeters in diameter, but their weight would be above 100 kilograms, or 220 pounds, which makes them more difficult to work with. If the length of one log is shorter than the desired length of the wall, another log is laid right next to it. They are then attached together with the same type of nail plates you used for the planks of wood. Now, listen carefully. The insulation in the grooves has to be laid with care and precision, avoiding any folds, and then secured with the staple gun at small intervals. Otherwise, the home won't retain heat. Thanks to the round shape of the logs, they can be rolled up the wall to install them on top of the existing logs, which makes the job significantly easier. Once you have two rows of logs, they are attached together using wooden dowel pins, about 20 to 25 millimeters in diameter. To do that, a hole one millimeter smaller than the dowel is drilled into the logs so that the pin is inserted tightly. The length of the dowel should be smaller than the depth of the incision so that the pin does not stick out. If needed, you can use a second dowel to sink the first one below the surface of the log. Instead of wooden dowels, you can use special metal pins designed for this exact purpose. They are more expensive, but the joint will be stronger and more reliable. Also, you can saw the logs to the desired length. Gradually, row by row, the logs are positioned to form a wall. The relatively low weight of the logs means that the job can be performed without specialist lifting and moving equipment, which makes this method of construction even more affordable. To raise the logs, you can make a simple lifting system using ropes. Alternatively, you can use a standard hoist with a capacity of 200 to 300 kilograms, or 440 to 660 pounds. Or you can even use a pulley to lift the logs. To make the job safer and more efficient, you need to make scaffolding, resting the bars on the walls. The wider the scaffolding, the safer it is. If you can use wooden boards, that's even better. Remember, safety first. 
Ideally, the boards are used to cover any gaps. Obviously, that will take more time. On the other hand, it will reduce the time of the actual work, and it will give you a peace of mind knowing that neither you nor your colleagues will be injured during your work. And don't forget to secure the logs together with the metal plates. You might think that it's unnecessary with the grooves and pins firmly holding the logs together, but you've got to consider the endurance of your construction. By connecting the logs with nail plates, you are increasing the building's endurance. This way, the logs will not shift in relation to one another when exposed to wind and other forces, and no gaps will occur between the logs. That means the house will retain heat in the winter and remain cool in the summer. Good insulation is one of the main advantages of a log house. Gradually, our log home will rise up to the roof. Make the rafters using 40mm or an inch and a half timber, cutting them to length. Join them using metal plates. By the way, notice that we are only using screws, no nails. The nails could come loose as time goes by. Plus, they can ruin the integrity of the wood when you hammer the nails in making the whole construction less durable. Additionally, working with screws is easier, quicker, and more pleasant. All you need is a good powered screwdriver, and the job is done. And don't be stingy with insulation. Attaching the rafters directly to the walls is an easy and reliable method. Make vertical grooves in the logs the exact same width as the rafters using a saw and a chisel. Alternatively, you can simply attach the rafter to the wall at an angle. Working with timber allows you to do almost anything. Then the rafters are secured using screws. If the rafters are simply rested on the wall, they should be attached using an L-shaped plate. When you build a house, measuring and marking is a must. Where to cut, make a groove, or drill a hole. That's why you should get a set square. That way you can mark with ease and precision. Just draw the line where you plan to make a cut, and then cut. But remember to always double check your measurements. Once the rafters are installed, we can start to add the sheathing using 20 mm or 4 fifths inch boards. The sheathing can be hammered together with nails. But first, you need to firmly attach the waterproof cover. First using a stapler gun, then adding the timber on top of the rafters. The sheathing is attached to said timber. That's the best way to achieve a fully waterproof roof. If the sheathing was attached directly onto the plastic, the moisture could travel inside through the nails that attach the sheathing to the rafters, because the nails would have penetrated the waterproofing material. Since the width of the roof is greater than the width of the plastic, you need to lay it in rows. The edges of the plastic should be attached with a special tape. The next row of the waterproof material should overlap just enough to cover the width of the tape. Then they can be stapled together. The sheathing is not continuous, but at certain intervals, around 250 to 350 millimeters, or 10 to 14 inches, because you don't need continuous sheathing for the Euro slate that will cover the roof. In this way, you need less material. Additionally, you can add more insulation into the resulting gaps. And finally, the beautiful log house is right in front of you. Soon, you'll have a warm, eco-friendly home with a breathtaking aroma of seasoned wood. The logs are soaked in special solution, making it fireproof. In a word, you can enjoy yourself. In fact, you'll get double the enjoyment knowing that you built this house with your own two hands, using your own mind. You proved to yourself that it's possible, and saved a pretty penny along the way, which you can now spend on things that would bring you joy. By the way, how much time would it take you to build a house? Obviously, it all depends on the size and the number of the workers. The minimum required personnel are two people, you and your friend. If your plan is to build a log cabin 8 by 8 meters, or 26 by 26 feet, set a whole month aside to do that. That said, making a dream come true is well worth the time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There's so much more exciting content ahead.